All right, Daily Greg here, Romney Ryan bus pulling up. We're going to see the governor of Virginia and the governor of Louisiana. On that debate last week. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, what a way to ruin a 20th anniversary for the press. <laughs> we got to have nice way of food and uh, hot wine when it was over. I tell you, it wasn't, uh, wasn't quite a night. But I tell you, that makes a difference when you've got a real leader with a real set of ideas to make America better to get the greatest country on earth out of debt and back to work in challenging the president for his ideas that have failed America now for the last four years. What a difference it makes side by side, wouldn't you agree? That's correct. Uh, Governor Jindal and I were talking about that earlier this morning. This president has been hostile to coal. 1,200 coal layoffs last week by Alpha National in Abingdon, Virginia, saying that it was the fault of the EPA, the Employment Prevention Agency, that continues to put new regulations, making it harder for coal mines to start up, making it harder for coal-fired plants uh, to be able to grow. The only thing standing between us and exploring off the coast of Virginia for oil and natural gas is President Obama. We need a new president so we can use all our God-given natural resources here in Virginia. said is we need to get ourselves out of debt. For all you young people here, if this generation of Americans and this generation of, of leaders doesn't get us out of debt, we're mortgaging your future. You're going to be paying for our excesses. We've overspent, we've overpromised, we've overborrowed, and now the bills are due. And if we don't start having a real plan for reducing spending, this country is going to go the way of Greece, in Portugal, and other countries, and it's going to happen in our lifetime. Paul Ryan, as you'll see tomorrow night, and Mitt Romney have the courage and the honesty to look you in the eye and say, you know what, we can't afford this anymore. We've got to do what Tart's doing and what small businesses are doing all across the country. What you've done in your personal life the last couple of years, and it's called math. If you spend more than you have for any period of time, you go broke. Everybody understands that except for President Obama. And so we've got to be able to fix that and make the tough decisions. And finally, we've got to make sure we're supporting the United States military. How many of you are veterans? God bless you. Thank you for your service to the United States. What this president has done to cut the funding for the United States Department of Defense in a time of war, when 125,000 men and women from Virginia are serving in the armed forces in Afghanistan and places around the country, is absolutely wrong. But look at the promises he's made and broken. Here we stand today, 23 million underemployed, unemployed Americans. Recent college graduates, half of them underemployed, unemployed. Median family income has fallen $4,000 since he's taken office. Median household worth at a two-decade low, 30% of those with mortgages underwater. And yet he offers no new ideas to get the economy growing again. But it's not just the economy where he's made and broken promises. Remember, he also made some promises about his borrowing. He said he was going to cut that deficit in half, yet instead they borrowed a trillion dollars every year that he's been president. The debt's now $16 trillion. Several months ago, my little girl came home from school with a button that she got from one of her friends and said, please, please don't tell the president what comes after a trillion. <laughs> we can't afford another four more years. This is our children's and grandchildren's future, but he also made promises on health care. Remember, he promises if you liked your health plan, your doctor, you can keep it. Now the government says under Obamacare, as many as 20 million Americans will lose access to their employer-provided health care. But this is not a new habit for the president. You remember in 2011, three different speeches. He said this about the American people. He said, maybe we're getting lazy, maybe we're getting soft, maybe we're losing our ambition. I don't know about you, that doesn't sound like the American people I meet every day. Got a message to the President of the United States. If he really believes the American people are lazy, soft, and losing our ambition, it is time for him to start packing his bags. It is time for him to move yeah. out of the White House. Yeah. Yeah. You, do, you do have to give the Vice President credit. At least he was honest. I don't think he meant to say this, but remember he said just several days ago, the middle class has been buried these last four years. <laughs> Think is being charged. He charged these last four years. 
But you know, it didn't just start last year. Remember four years ago, I see the hats. Remember this president said, if you build a coal facility, he was going to bankrupt anybody to try to do that under his administration. Remember back then he said his policies were going to raise our electricity rates. The list goes on and on. He blames the altitude. <laughs> <laughs> this election really comes down, really comes down to a fundamental choice. You know, I truly believe that President Obama's got almost what I believe it. It's almost like an Occupy Wall Street perspective, where he demonizes those that have been successful, tries to divide us by, by class, by region, by whatever will help him win his re-election, where he tries to raise taxes on the, the small business owners, the job creators. You know, Governor Romney understands he's got a different vision of the American dream. He understands in America you're not entitled to your neighbor's property, their home, their business, their cars. He understands in America, you're not promised equal outcomes, you're all promised equal opportunity. What makes us such a great country is the circumstances of your birth don't determine your outcome as an adult. Oh, I do hear it. Oh, that's, that's great to see young people out here at a big rally like this. Thank you for coming. You know what? I need to show you something. You know what? Hi. Three years ago. How are you? How are you? Glad to have you out here. Thank you. Three years ago. Oh, I'm going to show you this, okay? Tommy. Hanging out with the governor of Virginia here. Daily Greg. I was texting Marine if uh, Ryan was staying at your house. Oh, And he was doing debate prep out there. I heard. For Fisherville. And uh, nobody knew where he was staying. Yeah, because I don't know where he was staying. I imagine they um, hold that pretty close to the house. Well, they didn't want to be back. <laughs> They're going back up. <laughs> so, three, yeah. Thanks, uh, Dave. Coming out. three years yeah. ago at yeah. Celebrate Fairfax, or four, four for Fairfax, he was a baby. Yeah. You were running for governor. Oh, look at that. Here, oh, my goodness. Now you're the governor, he's and now he's in up. kindergarten. You see that? Do you see that? That is really Can you true. see it well enough? That's been uh, three and a half, four years. Yeah, you were there You were there with Juanita, who happens to be a very good friend of yeah. mine, and we happened to take your picture, but look at that. Thank you for